April 2022. Generator with correct tag reinstalled. Regulator cover reinstalled. Engine nice and clean. You can see green shaft pulley shiny. I did paint it back a little bit where I thought the seal would be, but I liked about a half inch. So, uh, Thrift Master. Red cable, so it's not to confuse people. As you can see, I painted it right up to there. Then it goes back to black. Because <laughs> the orange is the uh, ignition coil. So, heater control valve. Modern clamps. I just like those. Kept the original clamps for the hoses. This bottom hose is aftermarket and has aftermarket clamps. And then this fuel pump. I am looking but having a hard time finding a uh, fuel vacuum pump because these wipers, these vacuum operated wipers, they don't work very well. If you're even in the throttle a little bit, and you're in the throttle a lot, <laughs> because this 85 horsepower is not a lot of horsepower. So, especially a truck this heavy. I think that is also because of this diamond plate that I will be getting rid of. But I wanted to give you guys an idea on this headliner, what I ran into. And, uh, of course, you'll see the rat turds, the rat nest. But you see right here, these are actually crimp spots. So there's a, this is the front piece, okay, right here. This is, this is upside down, okay. So this is the back trim, I'll show you in a minute, and that over there is the back piece, okay. So the back piece is the only part that was sort of intact. But... When I pulled this piece out, it came with a center bow. Let me show you what I mean by a center bow. Okay. This right here is the center bow. And this is the front piece. Okay. And it's crimped into this, but it's actually not. Okay. Because I tried crimping it first and then putting it in here, and it just did not work. And let me show you why. So if you're replacing the headliner, I'm hoping this will help somebody out. What you want to do is you want to go ahead and I'm putting uh, sun visors on both sides. It came with a sun visor hole pre-drilled on the driver's side, but not the passenger side. Okay. But what you want to do is you want to set this into this seal because it'll kind of hold it. And you want to get this trim installed and of course I put that screw in and one screw over there to hold it at the very initial part and then you put this piece in and before you do that you want to spread because they they like crimp with like a pin kind of plier and what I did is I actually put a cutoff wheel in the groove and cut all of those divots out so that it's just a groove okay and like I said at first I was trying to crimp it and I was like, well, let me try something else. Because when I try to put it in here, you can't get it to sit on top of the seal and sell all this at the same time. Okay, It's just not going to happen. So I put this piece in first. And then I actually saw where at the top here, it would touch the skin of the cab. Okay, so it wasn't, it was a little bit too wide. So I trimmed off, I actually trimmed off that edge over there. Because this edge... I wanted to leave alone because I'd already uh, copied that hole. So, and that hole lines up. So I was like, well, it has to be up under that seal. And so once I got it to bow just a little bit, then I put this piece in and I slid it forward all the way across. And you have to be very careful to make sure it gets in. Right there was my hardest part. And then once you've got it flush up against that all the way down, and you'll feel it, it kind of, it'll kind of, click i don't know how to explain it but it would make a poo then once that piece is all situated then you put this piece in and it's the same thing you pull this seal back okay because i think from the factory 
this seal wasn't in place until after the headliner was in place is how they did it okay but of course you're gonna be doing it with the seal here so the seal will hold it for you and as you can see there's a hole okay and it's pretty tight but there's holes right there okay I've got that screw holding it before I put that trim piece back on but you want to slide it in to the back of that groove okay and so that was what it took okay so here's a uh, bottom view and also I fixed the dome lamp and what I did there is this has a more modern headlamp switch where you turn it to the left to turn on the interior lights but it grounds and this light is power so I actually had to put a relay and because I don't want anything to be left on with the key off turn the key on turn to the left right left and you can still override it with that switch but this is what I was after and now the switch is also lit because I went ahead and got the correct ignition switch and the bracket that holds it, there's a place for a bulb. And so the headlights can be turned on without the key on. And so you just pull it one for your driving lights and then you can see where to put your key, put your key in. And then you can go back to the newer style headlamp switch and turn on the dome lamp. So, anyway, of course, you can see the new floor mat. That's a previous video. The heater control valve, which I've seen most guys have bypassed, and put some kind of electronic gizmo. On another video, I showed you what I ran into to fix it, but there it is. And it works flawlessly. And basically, this temperature is just like an air conditioning. Uh, dash pod or whatever you want to call it but it expands a chamber up under a spring and that pulls in and out a valve that controls flow to the heater core and it actually works really well <clears throat> so you change the temperature by turning that knob you see that there's a spring loaded 